वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ अवर सीरीज द मदर अर्थ द टाइटल मदर अर्थ चोजन फॉर दिस सीरीज फोकसेस अटेंशन टू द अर्थ यूनिक पोजिशन इन द सोलर सिस्टम बिकॉज ऑफ विच इट हैज मेंटेन्ड द लाइफ सपोर्टिव रिसोर्सेस नेमली वॉटर इन इट्स थ्री फिजिकल स्टेट्स ऑक्सीजनेटेड breathable atmosphere and the magic material soil related to the exclusive composition of its crust centuries back about 400 years bc aristotle the greek philosopher and astronomer taught that the mankind was unique to the earth but now we know that the evolution of life on this planet is itself unique as the earth on which all kinds of life survived and has been surviving for the last 2 billion years aristotle also taught that the universe is constituted of five elements namely the earth that is the crust water that is the air fire and ether prior to that during the period 1500 bc the treatise on indian medicine the sushrut sanhita the compendium authored by sushrut postulated that these five elements that constitute the earth that is the planet earth also constituted the human body in the time span that passed after the teachings of socrates pluto and aristotle the conceptual boundaries of the universe have expanded much beyond the solar system to include all the galaxies and the trillions of stars that we see in the sky these stars and other celestial bodies together form clusters which are known as galaxies our earth and the sun together belong to the galaxy known as the milky way containing about 100000 million small and big stars our solar system along with other stars and their possible planetary systems revolve around the center of this galaxy the milky way it was the indian astronomer and mathematician aryabhat who in the 5th century postulated that the earth is spherical and besides revolving once annually around the sun it also rotates daily once around its own axis it took 365 days to revolve once around the sun and also 24 hours to rotate around its own axis it was realized soon that all planets are spherical in shape and they have different periods of revolving around the sun and rotating around their own axis all planets in the solar system spin anti clockwise around their own axis and revolving around the sun at different speeds and periods they adhere to their respective near elliptical orbits pythagoras the greek philosopher and mathematician who was almost contemporary to aryabhatta also supported this view that the earth was spherical and not flat 
as was thought before. These ideas about the shape of the earth and the periods of different planets to revolve around the sun were revolutionary and challenged the religious dogmas that prevailed at that time in human history. Aryabhata also gave to the world the number zero and the value of zero because of which we can count numbers beyond single digit. Adding zero to numbers was a quantum leap which brought brevity and precision also in astronomical and planetary measurements. Aryabhat postulated that the motions of the stars clusters in the sky with respect to the earth were relative motions. Since the planets revolved around the sun and also spun on their own axis. He determined the sizes of the celestial bodies, planets including the earth, by arriving at the value of pi, the Greek letter pi, as 3.1416, which is the ratio of the circumference with the radius of a circle. In centuries to come, the value of pi has been found handy for calculating and comparing the volumes of all near spherical celestial bodies. He was the first to explain how the journey of the moon around the earth caused the lunar and the solar eclipses. Since the moon and the earth themselves don't glow, no planets glow, only the stars glow. He calculated the time and durations of the two eclipses that are periodically seen. These propositions about planetary movement, about solar and lunar eclipses could not be accepted as they questioned the then existing religious beliefs. For centuries they were not accepted until in the 17th century, the year 1610, the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei supported the propositions of planetary movements around the Sun. Later also, they were supported by Johannes Kepler and by Isaac Newton in the 17th century itself, improving the magnifying powers of his telescopes. Galileo Galilei could observe how the satellites of Jupiter revolved around it. He could also observe the rings of Saturn and the different phases of Venus akin to the phases of the Moon we observe during the months. Kepler formulating three trigonometric equations confirmed further the elliptical orbits of the planets and postulated that the planets during their journey cover equal areas in equal times. The relation between the periods of different planets and the distances from the Sun was also established mathematically. Isaac Newton proposed that the planets were held in their orbits because of the gravitational force exerted by the Sun. This gravitational force was directly proportional to the mass of the planet 
and was inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the planet and the sun. Towards the middle of the 18th century, another mathematical equation known as the Titus Bodus law determined the position acquired by the planet that stabilized at specific distances from the sun. The distance of the earth from the sun was calculated as 150,000 kilometers which is recognized as one astronomical unit, one AU. The 18th, 19th and 20th centuries saw rapid developments in sciences which enriched our information substantially about the solar system and the universe. It was established that all matter in the universe was constituted of atoms of elements which had unique atomic structure. They were identified and distinguished from each other by the number of protons they had in their nucleus. The number of protons in the nucleus of each element is recognized as the atomic number of the element. The atomic number is unique to the element and about 118 such elements have been recognized which find their place in the periodic table first framed in 1869 by the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev. Since the middle of the 19th century, with the help of advanced telescopes and by spectral studies, it was deciphered that the sun is devoid of most elements discovered in the 18th century from the earth's crust and soil, from its atmosphere and from oceans and rivers. The sun is made up mostly of only two elements, hydrogen and helium, was a revelation. But its highly luminous state indicated enormous heat inside. It was revealed that the photosphere, which is the outermost layer of the sun, has temperature range of nearly 4000 to 7000 degrees centigrade. And the temperature increased inside towards its chromosphere and corona to at least 15 million degrees centigrade. The luminosity of the sun is thus correlated with this temperature achieved. Simultaneously, the sun has revealed compositional layers also. The photosphere is populated mostly by lighter atoms of hydrogen, but shows a transition up to the core with increasing proportion of heavier atoms of helium. The high temperature in the core region is maintained because of the enormous pressure that is exerted towards the central region by the huge mass of gaseous atoms in the sun. At such temperatures, two protons of hydrogen fuse with each other and produce one atom of helium. Such reactions referred to as the proton-proton fusion reactions generate enormous heat and light energy. The crowding of heavier and refractory atoms of helium near the core region occurs because of the gravitational collapse of helium and simultaneous ejection of lighter hydrogen towards the periphery. 
a continuous process of this kind results in expansion and contraction in volume which is common to most of the stars that we see in the sky and call this process as twinkling many of these stars are more massive than our sun in them the temperatures reach are much higher they are also compositionally layered but contain additional elements with atomic numbers higher than helium these stellar reactions are also called as nucleosynthesis reaction as they bring about fusion of the nuclei of elements with lower atomic numbers and produce a new element with higher atomic number our sun which is also massive contains more than 99% of the mass of the entire solar system of the remaining about 90% is distributed in the giant sized gaseous jovian planet which are also composed of hydrogen and helium hence their density is comparable between 1 and 1.5 grams per cc the terrestrial planets mercury venus earth and mars which have hard crust are far more dense excluding mars with density 4 the three have density little more than 5 grams per cc their compositions contain elements much heavier than helium and hydrogen present in the sun the earth has the maximum density of 5.52 and saturn has the minimum density of 0.69 grams per cc is the composition of the entire solar system related to the composition of a far more massive star than the sun how did these 118 elements with unique atomic numbers become a part of the components of the earth system the answers to these and many other questions would be substantiated further in the coming episodes of our series the mother earth in this episode we have taken a look at the centuries long work put in by philosophers astronomers physicists mathematicians nuclear scientists and chemists towards finding out more and more about the stars the universe and about the planets around us this sound foundation will enable us to delve deeper into the uniqueness of this life supportive planet earth in the next episode we will be going into more details of the stellar nucleosynthesis reactions and the origin of element it will be interesting to see how these furnaces in the sky constrained the compositions of the sun and the two groups of planets of our solar system thank you